Well, for the past few days, I've been immersed or immersing myself in learning how to program um, Adobe Premiere. Well, that's my first choice, but obviously it applied to, to all their products. And um, <laughs> three days, and I really haven't even written a line of code. Uh, I've just been researching the frameworks, the technologies used, um, and it's a mess. Uh, Adobe really puts very little money into it or effort, um, which I'll go over right now. Um, but in their defense, uh, there's a guy um, who has a cha YouTube channel on Programming Premiere, and he has 672 subscribers. Um, so it's not area, um, which is very, uh, I guess, used quite a, quite a bit. Um, anyway, I've, uh, let's get away from the politics of the thing. I'm just going to take you uh, through where I'm at after these three days. I just want to do this video so I can get this, you know, out of my system so I can actually move tomorrow towards real programming with this stuff. Uh, but anyway, here goes on where where we're at with it, or what I've found so far. Well, here's um, Adobe Premiere, and if you go into Premiere, you're not gonna find any place for uh, doing um, scripts. However, there is a window for extensions, um, and here I wrote just a little extension that's over here, um, just so I could see how I could you know do it. Anyway, so I did it, so I know I can create an extension in Adobe. I'll get to that in a second. Um, or Adobe Premiere, I should say. Uh, now, here's Photoshop. Now, in Photoshop, there is a way to run a script. So you can browse to a script anywhere in your... Well, I don't have any scripts here, but you could browse to a script, and you could run it here in, a, in uh, Adobe Photoshop. So right away, there's inconsistencies between the Adobe applications in what they can do. Now all the applications, or most of them I believe, <coughs> can load extensions now, run extensions. But extensions are very complicated, uh, which I'll get to. Uh, but scripts are easier, uh, but again, only some do it like Photoshop, Premiere does not. So when I first started looking into this, the thing I realized is that they have a thing called Adobe SEP, which is a community, co no sorry, common extensibility platform but I call it um, confusing effing programming. And confusing effing program <laughs> works with this other thing called um, Ceph, which is, uh, where is Ceph? Which is Chromium Embedded Framework, which is basically HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, like doing web apps in like a Chrome browser or any browser that supports Chromium, which I believe most of them are. So this is confusing effing framework. Um, so anyway, you use these two things uh, to uh, to create these, uh, what Adobe is now pushing, which are these panels, or I should say extensions. So the extension is basically a web app that will call um, some specialized Adobe JavaScript libraries um, that will expose their API, what you can do in the program. You can't do everything in all their programs as far as I know. Like in Premiere, you can't, at this point, I believe, do multicam editing or camera stuff. You can't call that function. So you just have to look through this documentation um, on their SEP on the GitHub and see here's, you know, and each, they come up with new version, SEP 9. And if you want, you go into the samples and you go into the test extensions and then you can look at all this stuff. Um, uh, Here's uh, documentation. Well, let's even go back. This is all very confusing. Now, the thing that they used to have um, is the thing called Extend Script Debugger. And this would be nice. This still works. And actually, after three days, I realized that I should actually just have started with this, even though many people say, well, it's being out, you know, they're not supporting it anymore, and you should move towards visual code. Um, for Microsoft, Visual Code is very complicated to set up. <laughs> I'm going to go into it, just believe me. Now, I'm sure it's very powerful once you get it set up, but it's not simple like this, and this thing is made to work with Adobe products. Mm -hmm. So you can just set your Adobe, you can pick, pick your Adobe product, like, you know, Premiere Pro, and you can run your, so if I load Premiere right now, I'm just load Premiere again. Ah. <sighs> It's another really irritating thing is that 
to test your extension, you have to reload the application each time. You see how long this, this takes to load. So if you're having a problem with your extensions, you know, and you want to test it, you gotta wait, you gotta you gotta close the application, reload, close. This kind of stuff to me is borderline unforgivable for a billion dollar corporation. Again, just getting all this ranting out of my system. <laughs> all right, so I've loaded Premiere Pro. So now if I go back here and I do a simple alert, this box opened in Premiere, and I run this, you see it opens here in the Adobe Premiere um, application. Anyway, the good thing about this extend script thing is it has all the browse, you can browse all the objects. So you can look at any sort of, uh, you can go through the app object, let's just say, and look at get constants or, you know, all the objects or methods and properties, like open document, how you might call like open document in your programming. Um, it has breakpoints, you can see the call stack, you can see your variables. This is really what you want. They really should actually still be keeping this up, this should not be archived. Um, and uh, as you can see here, though, if you go to their, to the website, uh, it says Extend Script Toolkit Archives. They now want you to go to Visual uh, Studio, like I said, which is very complicated. <sighs> okay, so, um, and here's a site that explains, you know, anyway, I, I watched many of these videos. Here's a, a from Premiere on script. Uh, it's run by a guy named, uh, I guess go to his channel. Anyway, these are great videos, been very helpful to me. Um, and, uh, you know, again, he's, he's showing how you can use these extensions. Uh, the extensions you need to first write your, like, sort of like your web app. Then you need to write your script that calls the Adobe specialized JavaScript that exposes the API of the application. Photoshop, Premiere, whatever. Then you have to um, so create a signed, um, you have to zip and sign in their specialized um, software. And then you need to drag the ZXP file, which is that here, to create it. And then you either send it to Adobe through the cloud, which is what they want. And then it puts it into your application again after you reboot it. Or there are ways you can, you can do it manually. It's all very complicated very kludgy. 80% of all the work here is done by, I think, just um, people outside Adobe. Uh, They're just trying to work with the, the technology that they have. So yeah, as I say this three days, really, you know, if Adobe invested the proper time and money into it, um, I would have been programming after two hours, but I've been spending three days just trying to, to figure out all these fragments of technology and how they fit together what works well for what. Um, so anyway, so my plan is for tomorrow when I start the programming, uh, I'm gonna start in uh, in extend script and start doing the scripts here and try and do everything here. And only once I have something that I really want embedded into the application, because again, you can call any script from here into the application if you wanna do something special. Once I get that far, then I'll go back to the step stuff, which again, I have learned how to do, and they'll create a proper um, panel for it um, in Premiere. So here's, uh, I do have some extensions. So here's like a JSX launcher. This is pretty interesting that somebody built, and this allows you to, well, it's, I don't have any scripts um, located, but uh, it would allow you to run your scripts from this panel launcher. And then there's a um, another one extension, um, your property explorer. And this is really more if you're developing stuff. So there's a, if I have an interesting extension, and hopefully I will one day, um, I'll put it in here. I actually wrote a, um, I should have brought it up. Well, let me go get it. Um, okay, here's the uh, um, sort of the presentation. I was going to make a YouTube video. So I'm just gonna walk you through these slides very quickly. Um, like I said, it's just a fast moving target trying to uh, figure out all these pieces, these kludgy pieces to Adobe. Anyway, so I was going to start my thing with, you know, how to create extensions in the, in, in the cloud. And I thought the first project I would do, so one of the problems I have in Premiere is I'll have like a clip on the timeline and I want to add a caption, a very simple caption, and then I want to um, 
fix that audio, just pick their like um, their essential audio, AI, you know, just the uh, automated whatever audio fixing thing from their um, essential audio and just put it into the timeline. So that's what I wanted to do. Just create a box that allow me to do these two things that I usually do in my in my sad simple little videos. <laughs> okay, so that's what that's the idea that I had. Though I've later learned that. Well, I was watching a video today from the Premiere scripting guy, and I think he said that you can't pick an effect and put it in, apply it to the timeline. You can only change effects that are already there. So we'll see. So there's a good chance I can't even do this thing. So I'm sure I can do the uh, correction caption. So anyway, I, I start that. I explained that in, in the in the SEP system, uh, that you have an HTML file where you can put the buttons that would do something. And then they have CSS, so you can beautify these buttons in any way that you want. This is all actually from Ceph, not Ceph, which is, again, the Chromium embedded framework. Um, uh, so I go into why I use you know, Chromium and ExtendScript and the difference between the two. Um, I explain how I'm going to have JavaScript to tell Premiere to do something. But uh, this going to be one JavaScript function for the page, like a web app, and then another functions that are part that 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 used adobe's what they send out for you to use with everything then i try and do graphics to explain it and i hate these graphics they drive me freaking nuts and here i am creating one i'm just adding to the confusion but anyway javascript runs in chromium extend script and steps so i'm trying to basically say yes yeah, so you're you write your javascript from your front end little panel and then your extend script for sep that's interpreted by the adobe application and so this is your your web page and the adobe application and you see, I pulled these graphics. Mm, they're very cute. <sighs> Still very confusing. Okay, so um, so here I'm just like sort of like uh, writing down things that I remember when I was l doing uh, when I created my uh, extensions, my first extension, like how to do it, the zip installer, the GitHub, the zip signed command, uh, you know, all this stuff that I know that I'll just forget in two seconds. And like I said, isn't it just in one place? It's all over the place. Um, uh, so to process VC, um, what was it? Oh yes, this is the, the visual code. Like you have to choose a folder for your scripts, make a workplace for your folder, download Adobe types from a GitHub, install the extension Adobe Script Writer, install the extension debugger. Then you have to configure these JSON files. I'll tell you, visual code, getting it to work with Adobe, I found it very, very confusing. Um, I still haven't, like I said, I'm going to ignore that for now. I'm going to go back to extend script and we'll come back to this later <sighs> so um here i did a demo project which i got running you saw the little frame and here's his name eli portel so his on script um blog and um youtube channel has been very very helpful in uh in doing this in fact without him i'd be completely lost maybe i would have been given up okay so um create the access how you create that xzp file it should say uh, okay, cover, it's just some notes I have. Stuff I'm gonna throw out, but I still save the links because maybe I'll need it later. Some notes I have. Oh yeah, security considerations. That's one of the reasons these panels are so complicated is uh, all security stuff, but I'm not gonna go into that. I'm sure you already know that. Okay, well, that's my, again, the past three days um, trying to get a handle on uh, programming stuff in Adobe applications. Like I said, um, I'm now going to go away from, uh, I'm just going to assume that it's a kludgy nightmare, and but I'm now going to move towards trying to program some, some things. And in my next videos, I'll go through doing that, um, you know, how to do that, um, or how I'm doing it. Because there are videos, there are a few videos out there. They're very good that explain how this works. And I highly recommend Eli's site, for example. Do you see I had my headphones on in the, in the, in the, in the video app? <laughs> Stuff has me so frazzled. Okay, bye again.